Buckle trochees, Dr. Ted. Yes. The foundation of what we do is the buckle trochee. What is a buckle trochee and why? How did we get to there? How did why we get are to you there? pronouncing it as buckle? Well, <laughs> that's the first question. The <laughs> dentists pronounce it as buckle. Some people pronounce it buccal. If you're from England, you say buccal, that's okay. Or if you know what the word trochee means, you probably don't say it right. <laughs> if you see how it's spelled, then you probably won't say it right. It's T-R-O-C-H-E, right? It's pronounced trochee, not troche, not troche, and not anything in between. <laughs> it's called trochee. So you and I have used buccal trochees in clinical practice for a long time. Yes. But it wasn't the first way that you thought about delivering our ingredients, the blue canatine specifically, our first product. Yeah, I formulated it as a gum because, you know, chewing gum makes you increase your IQ by about 10 points, right? right? And the reason for that is that as you chew, there's increased oxygenation of the blood. And so I said, gum. So I went to Rhode Island and this confectioner said, yes, we can make your gum, Dr. Ted, but we won't do it because it turns all of our equipment blue. So I presumed that that would be true for all confectioners. Uh, because it's a gum, right? And so I turned to uh, other forms, and the one that I settled on was a buccal choky, not a lozenge. A lozenge is technically something under the tongue, mm -hmm. but the, under the tongue there's only a single layer of mucosa. Right. So the absorption could be very, very fast. So you're gonna have a spike, or uh, the person will just swallow it because right. it's uh, basically bathed in saliva. The idea behind trochees is that the buccal cavity, the cavity between your upper cheek and gum, right, yeah. uh, for example, uh, is that the buccal cavity is about eight layers of mucosa, and therefore there's a gentler uh, absorption. So you allow the uh, trochee to melt, right? Uh, you don't dissolve it with your saliva. It's the opposition of the buccal trochee to the mucosa mm -hmm. that actually delivers it properly, right? So it melts on body temperature. Uh, I know that in the summers we have complaints about melting, but that's how it's supposed to be, right? Right, right, right. And are you ambibuckle, or you do have a buckle preference as far as what side? I'm ambibuckle. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But you can be unibuckle. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay too. Yeah. Depending on, you know, whether or not you have teeth implants or... Sure, you know. sure, sure, yeah. And so the buckle trochee itself, you don't want to move it around a whole lot when it's yeah, in your mouth, yeah. right? You want to keep it in one place. Yes, and and that's because you want the opposition to stay and the absorption to remain steady, right? right? You don't wet it with your saliva, you allow it to melt. And so that's also why you don't want to talk a lot when you have yeah, the buckle yeah, trophy yeah, in your yeah, mouth, if yeah. you can. Which can yeah. be a good thing. Yeah, it can be a really good thing, yeah. <laughs> the thing about buckle trophy is that most people don't understand is that it's not an easy thing to do. It's not, it was an easy thing for us to, to, to make, and we're the only company really out there that's doing it at scale. Yeah, um, and that's because we, you know, considering it as a form factor, it's not really common. It's not a common form factor, but we do have reasons for choosing it, you know, yes. after moving from, from the gum. Uh, for example, uh, you know, the absorption is a little slower, the, the, the rise is a little gentler. It gets there faster, but it doesn't give you a spike. This is right? compared to sublingual. Yeah, yeah, and that's because of the number of layers of mucosa that it has traversed. And therefore, if there is a gentler rise, there's a gentler come down, right? There's right. no crash right. for uh, that particular uh, form factor for delivery. Uh, the second thing is that it's closer to the uh, circulatory system of the brain, at the circle of Willis, for example, in that, uh, and, and therefore it delivers the actives of the um, trochee, you know, much faster. And of course, uh, the, one of the more common reasons cited for buccal trochees is that it bypasses the first pa pass effect of the liver, yeah. which is? The first pass metabolism aspect is a big piece of this, right? Yeah. Because anything that we take in is gonna go through our stomach, our small intestine mm -hmm. and through our liver. And when that happens, we often make things less bioavailable, especially mm -hmm. supplements. Mm -hmm. I like to give the example of NAC, NAC. I think mm -hmm. it's 10% bioavailable. Mm -hmm. So you take 100 milligrams of NAC, NAC, you only get 10 milligrams of mm -hmm. the body. Mm -hmm. And so the beautiful thing about a buccal trochee, as you and I both know, is that those ingredients that are being dissolved in the mouth, mm -hmm. they are still very highly bioavailable. Mm -hmm. And there's been really great studies on this, actually, in, in lots of different ways. And, there's actually a number of studies on fentanyl, specifically mm -hmm. that buccal absorption is much faster. Mm -hmm. We know this actually not even from fentanyl, but other ingredients as well. Mm -hmm. And so the key really to understand 
is that it's closer to the brain, mm -hmm. and it's and it's going to get to the brain faster. Mm -hmm. But it's also the ingredients are going to be more bioavailable. Mm -hmm. um, and then instead of if you swallow something, it has to go through that whole process of digestion, liver metabolism, etc. That takes time. Yes. As opposed mm -hmm. to a buccal trochee, you have an effect within about 15 to 30 minutes. Yes. Trochees belong to a class of. Uh, pharmaceuticals called transmucosal, right? right? So you have, you know, sublingual mucosa, buccal mucosa, gastrointestinal mucosa, rectal mucosa. These are places where you can actually deliver something, right, you right. know. And even uh, even in the lung, in the airway, you know, yep. there's a bronchial mucosa mm -hmm. uh, for aerosols. So, and all of these have different absorption rates, different characteristics for the bioavailability of. Um, uh, of the molecules and you know one of the things that I had to check there is that are the molecules small enough to pass through the buccal mucosa. Right, so that's yeah. a, good, a good point. Yeah. Not every ingredient, not every compound is going to be able to go through yeah, the buccal mucosa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, there was a, an article that I read just recently that, you know, oh, nanoparticles, you know, um, would actually uh, allow for better uh, mucosal uh, penetration. And I actually have made nanoparticles, but of uh, another molecule, but it's not necessary for uh, our uh, ingredients because they're small enough to pass through the buccal mucosa. And this is a big part of your formulation process is always to make sure that they'll pass through the bulky yeah, mucosa. Yeah. Uh, the nice thing also about trochees is that they're titratable, yes. which means that you can start off yes. with a quarter, a half, or a full. Mm -hmm. And the big thing about that for us is it's precision dosed, right? Yeah. So we know exactly how much a quarter of one of our trochees is going to be. Well, this is based on our, our clinical experience, yes. right? Yeah. Uh, we're both physicians and we would like to know exactly how much our patients are getting. Yes. And therefore, I said, I would like to know exactly what you know, how, uh, what those my uh, patient will tolerate yeah. for for the maximum effect, or in our case, for the optimum effect. Optimum effect, right? Yeah. Uh, it's scored right into uh, you could see a cross, and you could cross cut it into four. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're leery about the product at first, you know, you just want to try it. You can start with the fourth, and you say, okay, this is no effect, or I like this effect, but I would like a little bit more. Right. You know, then you take a half. You know, and then you could do three quarters, and then you could do a whole. Uh, for blue canatine, for example, I rarely do a whole. I'm okay with one fourth to one half, right? I think the average dose for most of our trochees is one half overall. Yeah, yeah. But certainly everybody's gonna have a different tolerance and different experience. And mm -hmm. that's the beautiful thing. If you get a capsule that's 500 milligrams, if you're a sensitive individual, mm. you may not like 500 milligrams. You might be going in, the, in your kitchen and trying to like figure out how to give yourself half of that, which is yeah. a huge pain in the butt. So. Yeah, well, you know, uh, our patients end up breaking the capsule, eyeballing the dose, yes. which is like such a tedious process, and then you get the wrong amount, right? Yes, exactly. And they go, oh, it doesn't work for me. You took too little, right? So. Yes, exactly. We're the only company that's doing this at scale. Yeah. And it's not an easy process. No. But we've figured it out over the years, because we know how powerful it is mm -hmm. to use something in the buccal mucosa here. Mm -hmm. So you have your multiple layers of mucosa there. Mm -hmm. You have immediate or very close access to the brain. Mm -hmm. You have the fast acting compared to swallowing, the titration capacity mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. so, and the bypassing of the first pass yes, effect. and the bypassing of the first pass effect as well. So yeah. we think trochees are pretty awesome, don't we? Yeah, well, you know, I think so. I made them. <laughs> <laughs>